Hi there, it's Tiffany from Daisy Farm Crafts and today I'm going to do a tutorial for you for our Retro Waves Crochet Baby Blanket. Super simple, we just love that it's basically like an inner locking. It's using double crochet and single crochet to create these little bubbles, I don't know, the, the waves, so super cute course I'm using our favorite burnout bundle up you'll need one for of the color and two of marshmallow for a nice baby size blanket that's about 34 by 34 so let's get started and I'll teach you the basics of this stitch okay so to get started I have chained 21 chains and the pattern repeat that you will use for your base chain is any number times eight plus five. For the baby blanket we did, that was chain 93, but you're free to make this any length that you would like. You just multiply any number times eight and then add five. Okay, we will begin in the second chain from the hook with single crochet and now work single crochet into the next three chains that will be for a total of four single crochets Now we're going to switch to double crochet. Yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and pull through two. That's double crochet. And I'm just working underneath the top loop of that base chain. And we are making four double crochets. Okay, that kind of got our first little wave going. Now let's go back to four single crochets. And you guessed it, let's do four double crochets. And once we work these final four uh, double crochets, you should have four chains left, and that will be your single crochets. So we want to begin and end the round with single crochets, or not the round, end the row, end the row. Okay, now we're going to repeat that. Always chain one after your single crochet rows. Turn your work like a page in a book. And let's work single crochets. And this time I'm working underneath both of the V's. If you look down at the top of the stitch, I'm inserting my hook underneath both of the V's, which is in, in patterns, if it just says this single crochet, that is the um, assumed, is that you're working underneath both Vs. A pattern will specifically say if you need to work underneath the front loop or the back loop. So now let's stack double crochets onto the top of these double crochets in the previous row and that will give us that 
little wave more kind of more I don't know what you'd say it almost looks like a little circle and we're doing this so that we you know and changing the color really helps um, get those little waves to stand out so single crochets on top worked into the tops of single crochets double crochets into double crochets for this round of color. Okay, we're gonna do something a little bit different now. Make sure one, two, three, four. I want you to just yarn over and then stop right there because we're going to change color. And how you change color is by pulling through on the last step of the stitch, you just simply lay the new color over and pull it through. Now make sure you're working with the correct tail here. Now we want to chain three. Now this first chain three actually is acting as our first double crochet. So when we turn, we kind of assume it's standing in for this space right here. So we only need to work three double crochets. So I skipped that first spot and worked into the second spot second stitch. So that's the first stitch. This is the second stitch. So I only work three and I'm working now with the cream color double crochets into the tops of the single crochet stitches. And I'm sure you can guess we're switching it up and <laughs> working the single crochets into the tops of the double crochets. And we'll always be doing that with the cream color. Which in this brand of yarn is called marshmallow. So why don't you do this for two rows and then honestly i think you get you know we'll I'll, I'll show you how to change color one more time and i'll show you how that uh i'm going to carry the yarn up the side to kind of help you from having to weave in too many ends oh one more thing that's different i guess too before i go when we you're going to chain three and turn just like as we started and the same thing applies it counts for this first double crochet so you only need to work three double crochets when you first start out on the end So here I am at the end of the row and I just worked three double crochets into the tops of the double crochets from the previous row and now I need to work a double crochet into, well I'm going to give you two options. Sometimes I will just insert my hook underneath all of these turning chains and work the double crochet. But if you don't like the look of that large hole, you also could just insert your hook into the top of the turning chain, kind of underneath a couple of those loops that that chain made and finish it that way. Whichever way you decide to do though, just don't forget to do it. <laughs> Otherwise your, your blanket will start uh, 
you'll lose a stitch and then you'll start getting a very slanted look. So here we are, one, two, three, four to finish the row. And honestly, I shouldn't have pulled through on that last step because we want to use, uh, we want to add in the next color, which would be in this blanket pattern is the uh, brook. So we'll be pulling through with the new color. And I'll start again with the color. It's just one chain and that does not count as a stitch. We want to work into the very first stitch. That chain particularly is just giving us height up to the next row. Okay, and notice I did not cut the cream or the, the violet gray. I'm going to, let me work these two rows. I'll come back on and I'll show you how I'm carrying the yarn up the side of the blanket because I'm going to be putting a border on this blanket and I want, and I'll be able to cover it up. But it is a way to help you save time from weaving in ends when the blanket's finished. Okay, so here, I've just finished the two rows of the brook color. And so I need to reach down. I wanna switch back to, the, to marshmallow. So I just take this tail and this is what it means by carrying the yarn up the side. I reach down, kind of make sure my tension is good. I don't want it to be pulled too tight or too loose. I'm just having it run up the side of the blanket. And I'll begin this row with my chain threes and I'll continue. So when I come back to this row and it's time to do another gray row, I'll do the same thing. Of course, it will be carried up much farther along the row. So it can be a little bit more tricky to make sure you get the tension right, but it really will save you when we're switching colors so much on this blanket. It's to just keep carrying the yarn. I'll show you on the swatch all the way up the side. So here, here's the, uh, here's what it looks like for the gray, is it's just carried up and carried up. And then of course, if I was to finish this, I'd be doing the same with the teal and the yellow. That one could be kind of optional if you wanted to cut that off, if you didn't want to carry it up quite so much, um, you know, then it wouldn't be too much to, to weave in just these colors but I'll leave that up to you. So here's our finished swatch, and uh, let me show you how to work the border now. So I want to work this border in cream. So I actually need to pull through with the cream one last time. And before I go any further, I am going to kind of lock this stitch with a stitch marker really quickly and uh, cut off the ends and weave them in. So hopefully, I mean, if you've carried yarn, you really will not have very many to weave in here, here, but since this is just a little swatch, um, I'm gonna do a, a little demonstration in case you're a brand new beginner and you haven't seen yarns or <laughs> the yarn being woven in. You just grab a, um, what, what we call a tapestry needle, which is like a blunt tip needle and it has a larger eye so that you can easily thread the yarn. And so say I'll show you how to weave in here with the yellow. Here we go. Okay, so you thread your needle and all you need to do is work your needle in and around the stitches that are the same color. And I sort of just go all sorts of directions so that I know that the yarn is secure and won't come undone. So I generally work in and around the stitches maybe five or six times. Sometimes it just depends on the yarn I'm using. This yarn 
um, does a pretty good job of uh, sticking to itself. You know, it's got these little fibers. It's not a very slippery yarn. So I just kind of work it in like that. And then when I feel like I've got enough, uh, I'll work under quite a few, pull it towards the end, and then I clip it fairly close to the work and it just disappears like that. So that's an example of weaving in the end. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that with this swatch and uh, then we'll get going on the border. Okay, I got those ends all cleaned up and we are ready to go with a round of single crochet. So let's go ahead and just insert your hook into the base of that final stitch and make a single crochet and let's work our way down. Generally the rule is one single crochet per the end of the rows that ended in single crochet and then two single crochets for the rows that end in double crochet. So kind of, I think I'm gonna catch the other single crochets when I come back around, that will be the corner. So remember these are the ends with the double crochet, so I'll work two here, and I'll work two here, and look at how it nicely is covering up that carried yarn, and we should work two for the end of the yellow rows, and basically it's four for the end of the cream colored rows. So if you work them in the same same spot, that kind of will give you a uh, more even finish. And honestly, when we, we get the border on and you kind of work this all together, everything sort of just looks nice and neat. Okay. And the other thing that we're going to do is we will work three single crochets into each corner. So now this is just for the sides of the blanket. When you get to the bottom of the blanket, you just work one stitch per stitch and same with the top. So I go ahead and work around the whole um, double crochet chain three thing when I get down there. So you'll see that it's, you know, it kind of will just make its own little pattern if you stay consistent as to where you're working your single crochets. So I've got two here, and I think I'll make that last one the corner space. So we're gonna add one and two, and begin working on the underside of this chain, one stitch per one stitch. So, all right, I'll keep working this around and I'll meet you back. We don't have to join or turn the round at all, but I'll show you how to make that back loop half double crochet ribbing stitch. All right, I've made my way all the way back to the beginning a stitch that I made and I'm going to work two more in that to kind of help me with my corner right there. So there you go. Kind of looks a little wavy still but that will work itself out as we continue to do the border. Okay so you don't need to turn or anything or join. We're going to start with five chains just like that, one, two, three, four, five. And we are going to work a half double crochet, which I yarned over. I'm inserting it into the second chain from the hook. 
and you pull through all three loops for half double crochet. So you yarn over like a double crochet and you pull up a loop, but you yarn over and pull through all three loops. And you'll work yourself all the way back down to that edge and you'll have made four half double crochets. Now, the length of this chain, you could actually change it. If you want your border to be a lot wider than, than what I'm doing, just, just make more chains. Okay, so into that very next single crochet, I want you to insert your hook, yarn over, pull it through, and pull it through the loop on your hook. That's a slip stitch. And you're going to do that again into the next single crochet. Now slowly, not slowly, but just I'm going to slowly show you how I'm turning the work away from like opposite of turning a page in a book. I'm going to yarn over and look, look down on these half double crochets and find the back loop and then make a half double crochet and we'll work in the four stitches one two oops i think i made easy to do okay I accidentally worked in the one that's the slip stitch. So you want to find the last one of the, out here, the first one that we made, and you work four. So I worked into the slip stitch. One, two, three, and how I know it's the fourth one, it, it kind of is uh, down there hiding chain one and turn. Now turn it back like you're turning forward in a book. And we're going to work into the back loop again. One, two, three, four, now let's slip stitch over into the next two. So these are stitches that haven't been worked into. One and two. Turn your work this way, like you're paging backward. I'm bringing my, my working yarn so that I can yarn over. And this is where I made a mistake. I, I accidentally went into the slip stitch. We don't want to do that. So you look for the four stitches, one, two, three, four, work in this one. One, two, three, four. Chain one and turn. And then just start working your, working your way. So I'm going to work down and I'll show you how we do the corner and how this will look. Looks pretty good. Okay, how's it going? I've got mine coming, coming along here. I've just got to this corner. So the difference, that really the only thing that's different is I'm only going to slip stitch over one time when I first reach that first uh, stitch that makes up the corner, one of those uh, three single crochets, I'll just slip stitch over one time and, um, and then when I get to the corner, I will go out and in, out and in all and be slip stitching right into that middle, middle single crochet stitch so that the work will fan around the corner. So I just 
I'm going to slip stitch over one time. This is going to be my corner uh, spot. So I'm just going over once. I'll go out. And I don't know if you notice on the on the very last one I have been going underneath both loops just when I do that that uh, very last stitch but this the first stitch I still go into the back loop just kind of a personal preference thing I think and here's number four okay so now I'm to that center stitch and I'll just slip stitch over into it and I'll go out and in but the next time I'm t it's time for me to slip stitch, I'll slip stitch right back into that same stitch. And then I'll do it again because that we need these extra rows to get us around the corner. You see, do you see what I'm saying? So now I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna slip stitch right to that next stitch go out and then honestly I'll see if I've I've gotten myself around the corner and if I have then I'll just continue then I'll go over one you know so you kind of can play with it so let's see how I do generally I do need to go into it three times though and whatever you decide to do just make sure you do it the same on every corner Okay, so there was one. Now I went right back into that same space and slip stitched and turned around. Let's head back out. We're getting around. Let's see how we do. I bet you I won't need to need to do it again. We'll see. I think I'm going to go slip stitch one more time in there and then come out one more slip stitch one time into the next and uh, I think we're good. I think we made it around the corner. You know, sometimes it just depends on the yarn brand and how wide your border is. So, but that's generally how we're going to get around the corner. It looks like we did it. Love it. Okay, so same idea. I'm going to come back. I'm just going to start slip stitching over two times again. Get myself do the corner corner and when I get back over here um, we're going to uh, I'll show you how I mean same idea get some more slip stitches there but we'll talk about that when I get get over there so just keep working on your border okay how did you do and of course you know you don't have to do this on your sample um, hopefully you'll get the gist of it and be working on your large blanket. But anyway, make it all the way back around. I ended up at that final stitch and I feel like that's enough. If you want to come back down, if you're still like kind of separate, do another row, but I'm good here. So I will tie off and grab that tapestry needle again. And we're going to just sew the, the two sides together. I just kind of do a little whip stitch on down and then I'll weave this end in and we're, we're done. We've got a really cool looking border here. So anyway, thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you enjoy making this project. Uh, if you'd like to come show us your work and what colors you chose, come and join the Daisy Farm Crafters group on Facebook. 
we would love to see and love to see your work. So wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. This turns out to be a really cute baby blanket or whatever size you want. So, and of course you could use any yarn that you want. Just, you know, use the appropriate hook size for the yarn that you choose. This is a very basic and classic crochet stitch and pattern. So, all right, thanks so much.